Hello and welcome to this new video. As you can see in the title, um, this video is all about my hamster care evolution. I will mostly talk about my enclosures and the setups, not really too much about the hamsters. Let me know in the comments if you would be interested in a video with all my hamsters, their stories and whatever. Um, while I talk in the beginning, I will show some clips of my dwarf hamster Lilia. So I want to start this video by talking a bit about how I got into hamsters. Um, I originally really wanted to get cats. I still love cats and want to have some someday. But unfortunately they weren't the right fit. Um, so in 2017 I finally realized that it would be best to just stop trying to convince my family to adopt cats and look into getting another pet because I really wanted to get some pet. Um, I researched and found hamsters and they just fit perfectly. Um, so I started researching more. In the beginning I had planned on getting one of those plastic duna cages but I pretty soon realized that that would not be ideal. Um, I then wanted to get a wooden enclosure, like one of those that you can get on Amazon or eBay, I don't remember the name. But after doing even more research, I realized that that would not be the best fit either, and I decided to get a glass enclosure. I planned on getting a, I think, 120 by 50 by 50 centimeter aquarium because that would have fit on a dresser perfectly because yes, back then I used to have a lot of furniture that I have since gotten rid of um, but I did even more research and realized that that probably would still be a bit too small so I decided on connecting three, enclo three aquariums um, I ordered three 120 by 50 by 50 centimeter aquariums but they had to cancel the order because they could not deliver the aquarium so that I didn't get them and I took that opportunity to um, look into getting a custom-made glass cage um, so I started contacting terrarium builders because I wanted to get um, three 120 by 60 by 70 centimeter um, glass tanks that I could connect. Um, I contacted at least 10 different terrarium builders and it really was worth doing that because there were huge price differences. I think of up to 500 euros, which is crazy. I still ended up paying a bit more than I should have but I am very happy with the enclosure I got. Um, so I started researching hamsters in May 2017 and this took place in I think late July in the beginning of August, somewhere around that time. So I settled on one terrarium builder, I ordered the, ordered the enclosure and the enclosure was set to be delivered in mid to late December. So I had a lot of time to do even more research, which I of course did. I spent hours every day and I really am not exaggerating, I mean hours every day, um, reading everything online that I could find in forums, just online generally, on Facebook groups and yeah, I looked through hundreds of threads with um, enclosure pictures for inspiration, ideas, tips and whatever and yeah I was slowly starting to buy everything and get everything ready and then one day in November I saw a, um, a post from a rescue in my area, well not really my area two hours away but a rescue that I could easily reach um, and she had a hamster that I absolutely fell in love with when I saw the picture um, and I would have loved to adopt her. I really wanted to adopt her but it would have been unfair um, to reserve her 
because my enclosure was set to be delivered in mid to late December, so she would have had to wait for a very long time. So that made me really sad. But then a couple of days later, I got an email saying that the enclosure was finished earlier. So I immediately messaged the rescue um, asking if I could adopt her. I described my enclosure, what I planned on setting it up with, um, the materials I was going to use, what I was feeding, and just general stuff like that. Um, she then asked the, if I could send her a picture of the enclosure with the wheel inside so she could judge if the size was really the size that I was saying it is because she wasn't expecting that the enclosure really is that big. So I took this picture here um, and sent it to her immediately right after the enclosure was delivered at like 7 a.m. And yeah, she loved the size. Um, then we talked about all the details. I signed the adoption contract, sent her the money for the adoption, and then I set up the enclosure. I really wanted to get her that same week or the next week um, so I had a week to set up the enclosure um, and here are some pictures I took some pictures while I was setting it up so here are a couple um, you can see the stilts and everything so um, it was really hamster safe um, yeah the pictures are not too great because um, my phone wasn't didn't take that great pictures, but here are some more of the finished enclosure. I still really like this enclosure. I um I find it really pretty. Um, the only thing that I would have changed um in hindsight was the digging boxes. I would have I would and should have made them um shorter so they would line up with the running platform just so they're wasn't such a um, height difference but overall I'm very happy with the enclosure especially considering that it was my first hamster enclosure ever so I got this little cutie her name was Ardia she was a Syrian hamster she was very cute very active she loved the enclosure I also made her this playpen which she loved um, yeah unfortunately she had to be put to sleep not even a month after i got her I'm not gonna get into that story i really wanted to get another hamster because losing my first hamster so quickly was very sad for me but after having spent so much time researching and getting everything ready i really wanted to get another hamster but i kind of thought that i wasn't supposed to get one so soon after so i was extremely glad when the rescue contacted me asking very nicely um, if I would be interested in adopting this other Syrian hamster. Here are some pictures. Um, that was with her for quite a long time because she was a very high energy hamster and she would benefit a lot from having such a big enclosure bec and because she was just so adorable and she would have she was the perfect fit i of course said yes so i set the enclosure up here are some pictures and got her on the 2nd of january 2018 um i do not really like this setup i think it was quite bare and boring but she really liked it um she also got the playpen which i had made a bit bigger as you can see in this picture uh yeah and quite soon after that i really wanted to get a second hamster a dwarf hamster so i got a second enclosure i set it in the playpen on these ikea tables um this enclosure was 300 by 65 by 60 centimeters the other enclosure that i already had is or was um 360 by 60 by 70 centimeters so the dwarf hamster enclosure was just a bit smaller um, and this was the setup that I had. I did change it a bit later on, I'm gonna show pictures later. Um, but this is what the setup looked like in the beginning. Um, I adopted this dwarf hamster, his name was Reo, from a 
rescue. He was just a baby when I got him. He was very cute, very tiny and very grumpy. Um, here are some pictures of him. And here are some pictures of the enclosure after the changes that I mentioned. Um, I just added a couple more things because I wanted it to be more cluttered and he really liked it. Then my Syrian, she, as I had mentioned, she had the playpen, but she started showing signs that she wasn't happy with the space. It just needed to be bigger. She was keeping me up at night because she was bored and yeah, all that led to me making the playpen even bigger. I made this little addition that was connected. Here are, here's a picture. But even with that, she was still not happy, so I decided to make the enclosure bigger. I wanted to make a corner enclosure. Um, here is a picture of what it looked like empty. Um, with this small little door, as you can see here, in the front. So I could put a staircase there to connect the playpen, connect the enclosure to the playpen. Um, here is the setup of the enclosure. Looking back, I think the setup was extremely ugly, but at the time I thought it was very nice and the hamster loved it, so that was great. Um, here are a couple of pictures of the playpen. I don't really have too many pictures and the playpen did change quite a lot because I re really wasn't happy with how it looked, but here are the pictures I could find. Um, yeah, then unfortunately in, I think, April 2019, I had to put Liralai to sleep, the Syrian that lived there, which was very sad for me because she really was my heart hamster. She is also the hamster that gave the name to this account and is in the profile picture, so, so she really was an important hamster to me. But I didn't want to keep her enclosure empty for too long, so I decided to adopt another Syrian from a rescue. Um, that Syrian was Cherry. This was the setup. Um, in the beginning, it did change along uh, with time a little bit, some minor changes. But this is what it looked like in the beginning. Um, I absolutely loved this setup. I think it was so pretty. Um, Cherry also loved it. In the beginning, she just had the enclosure because I like to just give the enclosure without access to the playpen in the beginning. So they really know that the enclosure is their home. That's where they're supposed to live, build their nest and hoard food and stuff because I do not want a hamster to live in the playpen. Um, so yeah, I was planning on making the playpen later. Because at the same time, I was planning on making my dwarf hamster's enclosure bigger, mainly because he didn't really like playpen time, but I still wanted to give him more space. So I was planning on getting two additions to his enclosure, but sadly he died during um, of co in a complication during an operation before I got the addition, so he never got to experience that. But the dwarf hamster that I adopted after him um, got to have a bigger enclosure. So I got the addition. Here's a picture of the empty enclosure. It's a really bad picture, but it's the only one I found. Um, and after I got that, I made Cherry's playpen. Here are some pictures of the playpen. Again, the playpen changed around a lot of times. It looked very different. Um, in the beginning, but I didn't find any pictures, but here are just some general playpen pictures. And then I set up the dwarf hamster enclosure. Here are some pictures. Again, looking back, I think it was absolutely hideous, um, but I loved it at the time and my dwarf hamster liked it too. Um, and I did say that I wasn't going to talk about the hamsters too much, but a short story so everything makes sense. Um, I got the dwarf hamster, Morika was her name, here's a picture. Um, she was very happy, very energetic, she loved the enclosure, but then one night I made the mistake of not closing the lid properly, 
so she squeezed through a tiny gap. Here's a picture that I took after I set her back in the enclosure and tried to find where she got out. Um, yeah, she escaped, jumped or fell down um, on the floor and was roaming around in Cherry's playpen. Cherry was fortunately in her enclosure sleeping, so nothing happened. I was extremely lucky that Marika didn't hurt herself and yeah, but the problem later was that she had now had a taste of freedom and she was obsessed. She tried all night to get out. She would literally jump over 15 centimeters to reach her um, enclosure lid to chew and climb on there. It was very dangerous but there really wasn't anything that I could do to prevent that because she always found a way to get to the lid. I do have a couple of pictures from that. Um, yeah. All that led to me building her a small, I think around two square meter playpen that I connected with her enclosure. But of course that was still too small for her. She was not happy. She just tried to escape the playpen, almost escaped the playpen once. Um, so that wasn't the right um, solution either. So I took away that playpen and decided to let her use Cherry's playpen under supervision while Cherry was of course not in a playpen. And that was the perfect decision because that's when everything stopped. She stopped um, climbing on the lid. She didn't show any signs of stress. So that was perfect. Unfortunately, she passed away very unexpectedly, um, which was very difficult for me because um, even though she used to drive me crazy every night, I loved her very much. I mean, I love all my hamsters very much, but I don't know, she was a bit special. Um, so I decided not to get a dwarf hamster after her because I somehow had in my head that I would probably compare the, a new dwarf hamster too much with her and the new dwarf just wouldn't measure up to her so yeah i decided to adopt a syrian instead so this is the setup that i had it was obviously very different because syrians have different needs here are some pictures i adopted melody here are some pictures of her um, if you follow my instagram and have been following for a while you may know her um, she loved the enclosure, she loved the playpen. I wanted to build her a staircase to the playpen so she and Cherry could alternate. Fortunately, I could not do that because she had to be put to sleep quite unexpectedly before um, I could do that. I had her for about a month. Um, that's a very long, very sad story, which I'm not gonna tell in this video. Um, yeah. And after having lost two hamsters so quickly after each other, I needed a break. So I I did reserve a hamster at the rescue quite soon after Melody passed, but I made very clear that I would need a couple of weeks to just get over everything and prepare the enclosure. So I, of course, emptied out the enclosure and made a new setup. And here are some pictures of that. And then I got Nea from a rescue. Um, and the setup is still quite the same. Um, there were a couple of changes. I took out the soil area because she didn't use that. But other than that, the enclosure pretty much looks the same. And I still like this setup very much. It's very pretty. Nia does not, well, I call her Nea in German, but Nia in English, so sorry for the confusion. Um, but she loves burrowing. Uh, she doesn't really use the heights and stuff on top. She prefers the playpen for that, but she loves burrowing in the enclosure. Um, I did end up to end up connecting the enclosure with the playpen with a staircase, and she loves it. Um, for a short time she and Cherry alternated each night, so one night she got the playpen, the other night Cherry, but then Cherry got some health issues that prevented her from using the playpen, so Nea got, her, got the playpen all to herself and she had and still has 
access 24-7. Um, then in the meantime, I, well, I had been wanting to get a third hamster for a very long time, but I finally decided to get a third enclosure and get a dwarf hamster because I missed having a dwarf very much. So I got this enclosure, which you probably know if you've watched some of my recent videos. But here are some pictures. These are, uh, this is my dwarf hamster Lilia's enclosure. Um, yeah, I have to admit, this is probably my absolute favorite enclosure so far. I think it's just so pretty, so cute. Um, and Lilia loves it. She uses every single centimeter of the enclosure. She doesn't really burrow, but she uses everything else. Um, so after I set this enclosure up, unfortunately I had to put the cherry to sleep. Um, and now her enclosure is not a hamster enclosure anymore. Um, it is now my fat tail gerbil bloops enclosure. Here's a picture of the little cutie. And here is a short video of his setup. It's very similar to a hamster enclosure, but the sand bath is very big because he likes sand. Um, so to, and yes, he lives alone. Um, fat tail gerbils are usually supposed to be kept in groups or pairs, but there are rare exceptions where they are not social. And Bloop is one of them. Um, I got him from a rescue, the same rescue that I got Cherry and Lilia from, and she tried socializing him with many different um, fat tail gerbils, and he showed very clearly that he wants to live alone, which he now gets to. Um, and he loves his enclosure, especially all his sand paths and his wheel. So I think that is everything um, from the very beginning to the present. I really hope you like this video. Um, let me know if you want to see that video of all my hamsters and their stories. Um, if you have any questions or other video ideas or requests, also let me know in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye!